Hey, this is Dr. B, and let's talk about error. Error is something that is a part of life. Scientists interpret it very specifically. For example, they differentiate between random and systematic error. A random error is typically not necessarily that big a deal. It's a one-time error that won't propagate it. So if you have a whole bunch of data, one piece of data is off, Maybe things aren't that bad, but a systematic error is the kind of error where that'll affect some other piece of data. It will propagate it, and it's typically much more serious. Okay, let's do some examples. You got a mass that you wrote down incorrectly. Well, that's just a random error. Notice it said a mass. If it said every mass, well, that might be a different situation. A balance is incorrectly teared for measurements with that plural there. That means every single one's going to be messed up. That's systematic. All volumes are measured from the top of the meniscus. Once again, notice the plural here, so every measurement is wrong. It's systematic. Your calorimeter is losing some heat, but you didn't know it did. Any data that comes from that will be inaccurate. That's systematic. A reading is estimated incorrectly. That's just one reading. If the other ones are all good, maybe you're okay. It's random. The incorrect equation was used. Well, that will affect every single piece of data. That's a systematic situation. The measurements received are assumed to be in pounds, but they're actually in grams. This is not unlike the Mars Climate Orbiter error, where units were completely wrong. That's seriously systematic. Fine. Let's talk about reproducible versus repeatable data. Yeah, scientists say that's two different situations. If it's repeatable, that's okay. That means if the same person did it under those conditions, they'll get the same results. But if it's reproducible, anybody can do it. And most scientific publications are looking for reproducible data, enough of a recipe, if you will, so that anybody who follows that recipe will make the pretty much exact same stuff. Uh, uncertainty does propagate under certain situations. Let's have a look at this uh, piece of data, two pieces of data actually. We've got initial volume of 15.05 mils, so right here, imagine this burette is filled up to uh, right there where the data says 15, and then you drip it in until the second reading says 37.20 ml. So it looks like you added about 22 or so mls, but let's be precise here. How much was actually added? Well, we could clearly get the difference here, but there's uncertainty in each one. Uh, you can do it the quick way, or you can do it the slow way. Let's do it the slow way and come up with a worst case scenario. So if this was actually on the high end and this was actually on the low end, you could have up to 22.25 um, uh, milliliters that are added. But if it was both of them are on the low end, you could have, uh, thir uh, let's see, 22.05 mLs that added. Notice that the error of uncertainty is no longer plus or minus 0.05. It's now plus or minus 0.1. So how much was added? 22.15 plus or minus 0.1 mLs. Getting the amount that's added is easy. It's just the difference. But coming up with the uncertainty is um, a little bit harder, unless you just realize that when you have multiple data points that are needed for a further piece of information, those uncertainties will simply be added, additive, 0.05 plus 0.05. See how it worked out? Uh, and if you're not sure, for example, if you're just taking averages and you're not sure if they're propagating or not, do a worst case scenario. Make, come up with the highest possible data, come up with the lowest possible data, and split the difference to come up with the uncertainty. That's the way to get it right every time. Finally, let's talk about percent accuracy and percent error. These show up a lot when we're kind of trying to determine how good things are. And percent accuracy should give you a smile because that's just like the grade on a test. It's the percent correct. It's like a grade that's easy. Almost any student knows in excruciating detail how to figure out their grade. Percent error, well, you know, there are formulas, error over accepted value times 100, but why don't you just do the difference, right? If it's 80% accurate, it's 20% error. 
And that's the case here. You've measured your mass to be 120 pounds. Oh my God, it's really 150. What's your percent error? Well, it's a lot. It's 30 off of those 150 and that's 20%. But you know, why not just do it first do the accuracy and then the rest is error, right? You're 120 out of a possible 150. That's 80% accurate, but that means it's 20% error. Either way works fine. Okay, that's a little bit about error.